Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna show you why traditional mopping robots aren't worth using, and why these three robotic mop vacuum combos are different. We're also gonna figure out if any of them are actually worth buying. This is how traditional robotic vacuums mop your floor. The problem is if you were mopping the floor, you wouldn't just drag a wet paper towel on the ground, you'd get down and you would scrub. About two years ago, I made a video about must-have features in robotic vacuums, and I said that the mopping performance of robotic vacuums wasn't worth the effort required to use them. However, as is usually the case, technology has made significant advances since that last video, and the robotic mops that I'm going to show you today are different. They don't just drag a wet towel on the ground anymore, they actually scrub. First, we've got the Ecovax T8 with auto empty base, which is a very capable robotic vacuum that comes with a standard, not so great mopping attachment. However, for $100, you can add the Osmo Pro mopping attachment, which significantly boosts the mopping performance. The Osmo Pro mopping attachment has a built-in motor that oscillates rapidly to scrub your floors during mopping runs, as well as a pump to precisely dial in the amount of water you want to use for each flooring type. The Ecovax T8 with auto empty base can frequently be found on sale for around $550, so adding the Osmo Pro mopping attachment brings it to a total cost of around $650. A similar oscillating mopping technology is used in the Roborock S7. The S7 is $649, and I also tested it with its auto empty base, which doesn't have any effect on the mopping capabilities, but in my opinion is an essential aspect of robotic vacuums these days, and that adds $299 to the price. Like the Ecovacs T8 with Osmo Pro, the Roborock S7 mop has a scrubbing action, but unlike the Osmo Pro, the scrubbing is more of a vibration than a side-to-side -side movement. And even at 240 frames per second, I wasn't able to actually capture the mopping pad moving. That being said, you can definitely hear it vibrating, and as you'll see later on, whatever it's doing, it is definitely effective at removing floor stains. The major advantage that the Roborock S7 has over the Ecovacs T8 is that it can also lift its mopping attachment whenever it detects a carpet or a rug. So you don't have to babysit the Roborock S7 as much as you do with other robotic mops. As I said, the total price as tested was around $950, and since the S7 and Auto Empty Base are pretty new to the market, I haven't seen any significant discounts or sales available on them yet. Last, usually priced around $1,000, is the Narwhal T10, and while the Ecovacs T8 and Roborock S7 are robotic vacuums that can also mop, the Narwhal T10 is a robotic mop that can also vacuum. Everything about the Narwhal is designed to be the best robotic mop on the market. There's no beater brush on the Narwhal, so in vacuuming mode, you'll switch out the mopping pad for side brushes and rely on suction alone to pick up dirt and debris, which isn't ideal for carpet, but it works just fine for hard flooring. However, instead of having a single vibrating pad like the other vacuums, in mopping mode the Narwhal has two spinning mopping pads that apply a fairly significant amount of downforce to clean stains. Also notably absent on the Narwhal T10 compared to the other robots is an on-robot water reservoir. And that's because the base contains both a clean water and a dirty water reservoir. And the Narwhal periodically returns to its base during its mopping runs to rinse, clean, and re-wet its mopping pads. As I said, basically everything about the Narwhal is designed with the best mopping performance in mind. So let's see with all that extra tech if it can wipe the floor with the competition. Get it? Wipe the floor, because they're robotic mops. I'm all about getting to the important stuff first, so let's talk about how they actually clean. In my house, three things end up on the floor on a semi-regular basis. Coffee drips, mud, and in the workout room, sweat. Since the dirt in Florida is significantly more sandy than most other places, I mixed in a little bit of clay to make it more muddy, and I used salt water in place of sweat, because gross. I made three separate testing sites with two milliliters each of these staining substances on both my laminate flooring and tile flooring, and to make it as difficult as possible, I put it right in the middle of the grout line in the tile. I gave each sample 24 hours to dry before I sent the robots to clean them up. Since these were extreme stains, I selected the most aggressive and wettest mopping options on each robot, and I had them each do two total passes on the stains. All the robots use a similar mopping pattern, where they mop the edges, and then they compute a path to fill in the area completely. One notable difference that you're going to see during testing is that the Ecovacs T8 and Roborock S7 both allow for mopping a custom area, while the Narwhal can only mop an entire room. So that meant I had to block off the other areas to stop the Narwhal from cleaning the other testing sites. 
On the laminate flooring, the Ecovacs T8 really struggled. And after the first pass, basically all the stains were still there and unchanged. And this was especially bad when compared to the Narwhal T10 and Roborock S7 single pass performance. Luckily, after a second run, the Ecovacs T8 did much better, and it removed at least some of each of the stains. However, it didn't perform nearly as well as the Narwhal T10 or the Roborock S7. The Roborock S7 ended up winning this competition on the laminate flooring, not only from a pure visual inspection, but I also cleaned the stains with a single spray of cleaner and a paper towel, and after drying, you can really see the difference in the amount of coffee that each vacuum was able to clean off the floor. On the tile, the Ecovacs T8 actually performed pretty well, and it cleaned up the majority of each stain, except what was in the grout line. I had high hopes that the Narwhal T10's brushes were going to be able to get down into the grout, but unfortunately that didn't happen, and again the tile stains cleaned up really well, but the grout line was filled with coffee. The Roborock S7, which did the best in the laminate flooring, was a total miss on the tile. And I mean a total miss. Remember how I said that the S7 could raise its mopping pad when it detected a carpet or a rug? Well, something about these stains and grout lines triggered the carpet detection on the first run. And while it looked like it was gonna make a perfect pass over the stains, at the last moment, it raised its mopping pad right before it hit the stains. For whatever reason, it didn't detect this imaginary carpet on the second pass, and it still managed to do a decent job cleaning the stains, but not nearly as good as it did on the laminate, and not as good as the other two robots in this case. The good news though is if you don't have carpet in your house, you can disable the auto raising of the mop pad, but that seems like a real shame to me since it is such a great feature. Interestingly, the visual stain from the Roborock S7 was definitely the worst, but after manually cleaning with a paper towel, the S7 was actually the cleanest, which could suggest that there was less coffee in the grout line and more on the tile. You can see that in the tile competition here, the Ecovacs T8 performed decently, but it still wasn't the best. Unfortunately though, the mopping performance of the Ecovacs T8 with Osmo Pro is the best part of it. So let's talk about the real reasons that you probably shouldn't buy it. First and foremost, the T8 with Osmo Pro mop will not navigate over carpet. If you have two rooms that you want to mop, but there isn't a hard floor path in between them, the T8 will not move in between those rooms, no matter what you do. And that's probably good because it can't raise its mop and it would get your carpet wet but whenever it detects carpet, you don't even have the option to override that detection. It just won't travel through that area when the mop is attached. Based on a poll of my subscribers, that means that roughly 25% of you would already not be able to use this attachment since your hard floor rooms are separated by carpeted spaces. Second, the Osmo Pro attachment for the Ecovacs T8 needs to be removed and stored separately from the vacuum. If the vacuum detects that the Osmo Pro mop is attached, it will automatically switch to mopping mode and will not travel to carpeted areas. It's also annoying that you have to find a place to store the attachment. You can't store it pad side down because it's wet and dirty from mopping. And if you flip it upside down, the water's gonna leak out the top. Either way, while the Ecovacs T8 Plus with Auto Empty Base is one of my favorite robotic vacuums, and it's actually the one that I use every day in my house, I can't recommend the Osmo Pro mopping attachment for it. So that leaves us with the Roborock S7 and the Narwhal T10, which are both very good. From a mopping standpoint, the Narwhal T10 is a much better cleaner. Unfortunately, I think it's only gonna be suitable for a small number of homes, so let's talk about some of those key differences. The Roborock S7 does a great job cleaning up stains, but those stains end up right on the pad, and then that same pad gets used to mop the rest of the house. Between mopping runs, you're gonna to need to put on a new pad and eventually throw all of them in the washing machine before reusing them. The Narwhal T10, on the other hand, cleans its pads regularly during a single cleaning session, maybe even too much. The four liter wash water tank is only enough for roughly 200 square meters or 2,150 square feet of mopping, which for a large house with primarily hard floors means that the tanks are gonna to need to be filled and emptied every mopping session. But it does mean that the dirty water from one room isn't gonna get spread around to the rest of the room by a dirty mopping pad. There's also another huge advantage to the Narwhal T10's water tank design, cleaning solution. The Roborock S7 specifically says to only use water in its reservoir, while the Narwhal T10 has specific cleaning solution pads that dissolve and lead to a much more effective cleaning experience. I reran the coffee test using the cleaning solution instead of water and the difference was pretty significant. I actually had to go back and check the original footage to figure out where the stain was in the first place because it was 100% gone. No stain at all and no residue on the paper towel. That's awesome, right? Well, it depends. Like I mentioned before, 25% of people responded to my poll saying that in their home, rooms that needed to be mopped were separated by carpeted areas or large rugs. And unlike the Ecovacs T8 with Osmo Pro that just refuses to travel over carpet, the Narwhal just ignores carpet altogether and runs its wet brushes like it would on hard flooring, resulting in a very damp path between rooms. 
This also applies to the path back to the base, which means that every time it returns home to clean its pads, dirty water is gonna get ground into your carpet. If you're like the 25% that has a mix of carpet and hard flooring, but has a clear path between all of your mopping rooms, you can set up no mop zones in the Narwhal app. But I did find that they weren't as precise as the ones in the Roborock S7 app, and unlike the Roborock app, there's no visual cue to show you where a rug or a carpet might be. Still, after some trial and error, I was able to get the Narwhal T10's no-go lines dialed in, which prevented it from pushing around small rugs while it was mopping. Almost 50% of people responded that their entire home had hard flooring. So the Narwhal T10 is definitely gonna work for them, right? Well, maybe not. Mopping is most effective if the floors are relatively clean and free of debris. And for that, you need to vacuum first. The Narwhal T10 does have a vacuum attachment, which while lacking a beater bar, will do just fine on hard flooring using just suction and its side brushes. Unfortunately, with the Narwhal, it's a one or the other situation, so you'll need to switch out the vacuum brushes for the mopping pads every time you want to use them. In addition to that, despite its large base, the Narwhal doesn't have any auto-empty capabilities for its dustbin, and the dustbin that it does have is relatively small compared to other robotic vacuums on the market. This means that the Narwhal T10 is probably not going to be up to the task if you have shedding pets, and if you do, you should expect to empty the dustbin several times during the vacuuming runs that you should complete prior to mopping. You could solve this issue by purchasing a separate robotic vacuum to run before the Narwhal T10 mops, but that of course comes with a pretty large added cost and the annoyance of having to place two large bases. In contrast, the S7 vacuums and mops at the same time. It runs its beater bar, vacuum, and mopping attachment all at once. When it's on hard flooring, it runs both the vacuum and the mop, sucking up any debris before it gets into the mopping pad. Whenever it encounters a rug or a carpet, it lifts up the mopping attachment, which not only keeps your carpets and rugs clean and dry, but it also means that they won't get pushed around. The Roborock S7 even has a feature where if it detects a new rug, it will stop and map out the entire border of the rug before continuing with its mopping run. Add to that the fact that the Roborock S7 is also one of the best robotic vacuums on the market, and the fact that they just released an auto-empty bin, and that basically means that it is easily the all-around best choice for a robotic vacuum or mop, as long as the water-only mopping and dirty pad issues aren't a deal-breaker for you. If your home is under 200 square meters of hard flooring, and you're willing to purchase a separate robotic vacuum to run before you mop, the Narwhal T10 is undeniably good at mopping. The T10 is the first product from Narwhal, and I think they're really onto something great. If the next generation of Narwhal could raise up its mopping pads and automatically switch from vacuuming mode to mopping modes, it's gonna be a real game changer. But for now, as I said, I think the Narwhal T10 is only suitable for a very small, very specific subset of people. Unlike the Roborock S7, that's pretty much gonna work for everybody. If you're one of my normal viewers, you're gonna be happy to know that the Roborock S7 integrates easily into Home Assistant without installing any custom firmware and exposes the status of the robot and allows you to issue commands like start cleaning and return to base. More advanced functionality is also available if you're willing to do a little bit of tinkering like downloading maps from the robot and cleaning specific rooms. If you're not a Home Assistant user, you'll also be happy to know that you can control the Roborock S7 with both your Amazon Echo devices and Google Home devices. If it hasn't come across yet, I am blown away by the quality and performance of the Roborock S7, and it is 100% my new recommendation for anyone looking for a high-end robotic vacuum and mop. If the $950 price tag of the Roborock S7 and its auto-empty base is too rich for your blood, I really can't blame you. However, hopefully combos and sales will eventually make it more affordable. I do watch for unusually good sales and post them to my Twitter account, so follow me there if you're interested. Thank you so much to all of my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.